going on. If you've captured a UFO, you want to report it, we'll uh, showcase it right here at Third Phase Moon right now. But let's go to area code 319 joining us live right here. Uh, welcome to Third Phase Moon. Who's calling and where are you calling from? My name is Erica Getch, and I'm calling from the Midwest, guys. <laughs> hey, Erica, welcome back to the show. Hi. Hey, we're talking um, about knowing I- the tonight. Yeah, I was and, just, I'm uh, sorry. I was just going to say, I, I tuned in late because I had to reboot, so I, I just barely heard somebody say about the back of the moon and that there's alien well, bases. Yeah, absolutely, Erica. We're pretty much going over alien abductions. People called in, uh, the man from Virginia uh, last week, that we're trying to follow up and get the implant uh, uh, x-ray, but it didn't happen, unfortunately, so we're kind of going into detail about his possible alien abduction. Um, Erica, you've uh, apparently yourself have been in close encounters with these aliens and have been abducted yourself. Am I mistaken or is this correct? No, this is correct. We're talking to Erica. She's sharing her abduction experience. If you just joined us right here on Third Phase and basically put yourself in a setting, Iowa in a cornfield, it's at dusk and uh, the sun's just about to go down. And then what happens, Erica? Uh, basically, uh, well, before that, I had, I had actually seen what I thought was maybe an airplane that was keeping pace with the car. But, of course, you know, it, as soon as I was about ready to say something to my friends, and, and the radio was really loud because we were all singing, you know, and the car stalls. Okay, so my attention obviously went to, towards, I mean, not the car, I'm sorry, the radio went down. And we were all complaining because, you know, obviously we were singing, and... Then next thing you know, the car stalls on the side of the road, and we're just looking around, and we're stuck. And this is before cell phones. It was 1985. So we, you know, that was in my mind. I was thinking, my God, you know, how are we going to get help? There's nobody around, you know. It was like a dirt road and just back back road, you know. So for, to make a long story short, um, we saw the craft hovering above the tree line, and it looked typical saucer-shaped, had uh, different color lights on it, and, I mean, we had a sense a sense about us that it was like listening, you know, because, of course, we didn't think of telepathy or any kind of, we just thought, we just knew. It's like you just know, and we were like, oh, whisper, whisper, you know, like they were watching, listening, something, and... I mean, for the most part, we had, like, missing time after that. It was 12 hours. Um, I had a flashback of standing outside the next day outside of the car, my friends and I, and it was the sun was starting to come up, um, and we, the craft darted off. So 25 years later, I got hypnosis, and I only got it because I didn't think anything happened. I just thought, what what was going on with that? Um, my sister actually remembers uh, when I came home the next day, and we all told her that we saw that. And she said her and the city mayor and all the neighbors had seen a craft, but way off. I mean, just, you know, enough they could still see the colored lights, but it was clear off. Um, there's a lot, so it was kind of like a mass sighting around town. But basically I got my hypnosis, and to make a long story short, I, I was encountering... Uh, well, of course, the the small little intake grays or little childlike beings, and also I had seen a tall gray uh, off in the you know in the ship, but I didn't interact with it. And so there was some blue reptilian, maybe reptilian humanoid, or I'm not even sure, you know, hybrid uh, beings. And uh, I was taken aboard the ship. I mean taken aboard the rest of the ship and it kind of makes sense what somebody explained because the ship itself when i saw it um it wasn't any bigger from you know it was floating above the tree line so it was about 500 feet and it, it was about the size of a large or however you want to call it an average size you know large type house but when I was in in the the exam room, you know, it was a lot smaller. And then eventually, we I was allowed to walk 
the sh- the the full ship. Now it doesn't make sense because the ship itself, the, the large portion that I was in, was way bigger than anything. And uh, someone had suggested that it was probably docked into the mothership or something. So uh, there's a lot of stuff, and I'm making it very vague right now just to get through this. But so no, um, no, yeah, no. I had a hybrid that I met, and I didn't know it was mine until I started bonding with it and everything. So, um, but I, you know, again, I, I have a, a lot of information that I've been working with them and everything, and it sounds insane. It really does. It sounds absolutely absurd. <laughs> People will be like, oh, my God, Hold she's on working a- with Hold on a sec, Erica. We've, uh, sure. we've heard the exact same stories over and over again. It's not a, uh, yeah, people that haven't experienced it. Let me tell you, you're not uh, alone in the, the United States. Four million people claim they've been abducted every year. People are waking up. People are understanding. That's why this testimony is why people just really want to hear what's going on. I know um, people have some questions for you, but my first question before we get any further is, through, you're missing basically, I think, from dusk till dawn. So it was a 12-hour period, and then you went under hypnotic regression and found out about what happened to you during that time. But you said you weren't alone. Have you spoken with the other people and what they what they experienced? What uh, what where's their head at? Well, see, now that this makes it all the more difficult for me to um, even just get any any full-on witnesses there, because I had just moved, uh, like, a a town or two away from where I was originally living at the time, right before the the scenario went down, the major thing, and um, so I moved from my mom's to my dad's, and I had made new friends, and my sister recognizes that she, she remembers seeing the one girl that I was, like, she was my best friend at the time, but, I mean... She, you know, it was so long ago, it was 25 years ago, and nobody ever talked about it after that, and my friends and I lost complete contact, um, because then I basically ended up moving back with my mom, and so when I did try to get a hold of someone that I'm pretty sure it was the same person that my sister saw and everything, and I was, I wanted to talk to her as soon as I mentioned that to her, and it was actually on Facebook, she blocked me. And, I mean, I didn't say it crazy, you know. I didn't say, oh, hi, I haven't seen you in years. Hey, what about the, you know, she, she, we were actually going to get together, you know, talk, whatever. Like, oh, gosh. And, no, she blocked me. And I, I still am trying for, you know, since I'm trying to write the book to get my, my information out, I can't even find her to get any kind of collaboration on this to have her, you know, come forward or, or even just privately to me. And so that is the only reason why I went to hypnosis, is to find out who I was with on that day for the sighting. And that I had no knowledge of any kind of abduction, except for I had some flashbacks, flash memories and things. Of, But, of course, I didn't put all the pieces together at the time because I really didn't, you know, want to go that far in my mind. I just thought, oh, you know, this is kind of weird stuff and what's going on. I mean, why would I be looking out the window, standing up, looking out this window of the car, but the car, you can't stand in a car, you know what I mean? (laughs) So why would I be standing, this is a flash memory, I'm standing, I'm looking at the stars, it's completely dark and I can see the stars and I'm yelling to my friends with my face pressed up against the glass and my hand saying, my God, look at these stars, They're so look at all of this, it's so beautiful. No, why would I be doing that when the car, you can, you know what I'm saying? The whole, all this stuff comes like to you as time goes on and when you put the pieces together after, it makes perfect sense. You know, in fact, Ricky G was somebody that I talked to more so in the beginning. But and so by his encouragement, you know, like with what he's doing, when what he had to come, I mean, he went through a lot of harassment. And it's like, hey, we don't know why this and that, and nobody knows why someone's being abducted or anything. It just, you know what I mean? It's one of those things not like we want to be picked on. Well, we're taking up, Erica, it's, Wow, we I think we've just touched the tip of the iceberg here, but I think uh, there's some people that might want to ask some questions uh, 
to Erica right now. And uh, let's go to Vince Pounds from Los Angeles. Any uh, questions for Erica? Wow. Uh, well, she's triggering off some things that occurred when I was younger. And there, there is – I don't consider this abduction in my case – it was more like it was a willingness thing to go through. Now, this where it may match up with what she's talking about is w- one typical night when I was like 13 years old, and I just happened to get up in the middle of the night, and I have five other brothers that stayed in the same room and just walked out the door. They all were asleep and just start looking up in the sky and start observing the stars and with excitement on my mind that, they're here and they're here to visit me and several others and just observing the stars. They start making their movements and formations in the sky and they start dropping out of the sky and coming down in various parts of the cities in the San Gabriel Valley area. And this was back in like 76, 1976. And everything in my mind puts things together like hmm, 76, the spirit of 76 and all this symbolic stuff comes to, to, to make it more uh, memorable and understandable. And now I'm going like, to this day, there has to be others that had an experience that same night. Now, I was 13 years old. I had a paper route. And the following morning after this whole encounter, which I'm not mentioning on this show tonight, I'll get with you in a future show about, is that I went on my paper route the next day after school, but before I went on my paper, the, the papers were dropped off in front of my house. I go out, walk out to pick up the papers, bring them back to where I fold them, look at the top left-hand corner of the paper, small article, UFO seen over San Gabriel Mountains, flying over north in a northeastern direction over San Gabriel Mountains. And that's just the headliner. And it was a small article uh, on the inside, astronomers at the Griffith and um, Mount Wilson Observatory observe object uh, not descending but ascending across the night skies. Now, in my experience that night, which I won't go into more detail about, that was the same direction as the craft that I was in that we were going. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's uh, pretty much. So that was you. Uh, they <laughs> bring really? up some. Uh, my hair is rising on my arm right there. It's pretty uh, a great story. I know these stories that people are listening to aren't that crazy after all. Dr. Jade's heard it all as well. Does this uh, sound anything unusual that we've heard with uh, alien abduction, Dr. J? Absolutely not. This is all very, very consistent with what we've heard with the hundreds of people that we've spoken to and the people that they've worked with. For instance, just the three main hypnotherapists that we worked with have worked with close to 3,000 abductees total, Yvonne Smith, Barbara Lamb, and Kathleen Martin, and also Denise Stoner. Also, I want to just throw in there, when people are seeing a craft, uh, usually 20, 30, 45 feet in diameter, or if it's a triangle, regardless the shape, or if it's on the smaller side, the reason is, is those are Earth excursion vehicles where uh, the bigger ones are out there. So if someone's seeing a UFO, more than likely it's on its way to pick someone up for an abduction or drop them off after an abduction. So everything fits in line, everything has an agenda, and it seems to be like everything's falling in place right now. Uh, Dr. J, any uh, questions for Erica? I, I have one, but I'm sure you got one uh, that you've had that you're ready to ask. Go ahead. Erica, what types of ETs have you seen other, other than the standard grades? Well, um, the blue reptilian or, you know, honestly, I don't know if it's, <laughs> it didn't have, it doesn't look typical as to a, a regular reptilian. So just not even like you just take a regular, what they say a reptilian ET looks like. Sort you of mean the like, light being? Well, it would be like, I have a picture of it on my Facebook because I, I, um, I somebody did an illustration for me, but it, it you know this it's kind of um, humanoid and like it has it doesn't have a tail, so it would be you know wouldn't be Draco, but uh, I don't know because you know honestly I have my um, my I actually used to post my um, hypnosis 
session because I, I recorded it. I had it recorded in the doctor's office because I got it done by a professional, and um, I just had it recorded so that my husband could could share the information. You know, I could, I mean, relate it to him. And it took, I mean, I was so embarrassed. It took me like a whole week of playing it a lot, going, gosh, I can't even believe this. Cause, and he was like, what? And I was embarrassed. I wanted, I really actually asked him to leave the room because I couldn't believe what I was hearing because, you know, I, had time, I, mean, I got put under really good because, I mean, I have anxiety, which obviously I'm sure you guys know that, you know, it's, it's typical um, to develop an ang- anxiety kind of social thing when, um, you know, you might be taken or something, which, so I had uh, been working with this um, therapist on ask, that. Just Sure. I, I want to ask, so you went into the hypnotic re- uh, regression session and recorded it, and mm-hmm. you'd, you'd come back and listen to the audio tapes afterwards. And what you heard, you couldn't believe what basically when well it took me through such emotions and and I felt strange and embarrassed just embarrassed like I don't know I mean I've been married for 21 years and I've never been able to have children and yet I have a hybrid and you see I mean that that was kind of emotional there you know and it's <sighs> I don't know. I just even if I if I think about it too long, it, even on the show, uh, I'll just I'll get I, I feel flustered a little bit about it. But there was a lot of things. Um, I, I have so many mixed feelings, and, and most of it though is that I miss that family of mine. That whoever you know they are, I, I know them. I miss them. I didn't even want to go. I didn't want to leave. Um, it, there was so much love there, and it's actually more of a positive. Uh, connection, but I have to say it wasn't always. I mean, I was there was some scary moments. So, you know, there's good and bad mixed in it. Well, uh, you just put out. You have a hybrid. You, uh, oh, if you can, is is uh, the hybrid living here on Earth or is the? Uh, no, um, the hybrid. Well, I had actually remote viewed on um, Mr. E Strange Visitor Show. And um, I was just a guest, and he, I mean, he's a friend of mine. And I kind of remote viewed right on the show because we did, like, I think it was, I swear, a three- or four-hour show. I mean, we were just hanging out. And I didn't know if I really could because, I mean, I occasionally remote view. I mean, it's just kind of like. And I sort of, I don't know if this is what you call it, but I kind of saw in a remote viewing sense, maybe psy- psychic, I I don't know. I don't even study up on that very well, so I don't know what you'd call it. But basically that she was surrounded, um, as she's kind of like an adult now, um, she sort of just has something going on, and there's, there was this, um, I don't What's know. Uh, Is there a name that they gave her? Oh, no, I I don't. There's no name that I know of. I mean, <laughs> but, Thank you know, there's so a connection, and I, and I basically missed her in, in a sense. I still kind of feel that there's a connection there. So it's kind of a mystery, you know. Wow, as a as a mom, I bet you you could feel a connection, and still maybe do you think one of these days you'll uh, you know be reunited? It wouldn't surprise me. I I really don't know. I mean, I it wouldn't surprise me at all, and 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 I would actually like that, <laughs> but you know she could be sort of a, I mean, what do they call those? Guardian angel kind of, maybe she's just sort of watching me from a distance. I really don't know. I, like I said, I mean, I, I understand the metaphysical things, but I don't really talk about it that much. Like, oh, maybe in another realm. You never know. I try to take more of a, um, I don't know, a, a standard approach, you know, because it's possible. If uh, area code 540 from Virginia is still with us, he be- yeah. believed that he's been abducted. Do you have any uh, questions for Erica in regards no, to just, maybe your similarities? When she was talking about Stan Romanek, I had saved it on one of my favorites on my computer, and he he talked about how when he got um, he was he was kind of confused. He felt dumbfounded, like I kind of do. He kind of like you know, this is in denial. I guess it felt like he was in denial, you know, like I do. But anyway, he he said that that. Uh, he got on his computer 
and all of a sudden this web page or whatever he got on come up and it said he was supposed to be one night, supposed to have been abducted, and the government knew about it. If I remember, you remember when I talked to you last time, I told you I thought that the government was behind some of it. Absolutely, we it. did, uh, you know, the 2013 best specials, and in one of yeah. them, uh, part three, uh, Dr. Greer spoke of the false flag, and he believes that mm-hmm. the military's right. genetically engineering humans to look and uh, mimic aliens, along with the technology that we already have, right. these anti-gravity devices to basically do this false flag alien abduction and blame it on the aliens, and then still, uh, you know, have our own uh, secret government doing some nasty things that we, we're not sure what's going on. But, you know, this is a theory that's out there. Yeah, yeah. And also, she was talking about um, like angels. Uh, I've experienced that myself. I got run a fever one time, got real sick as a little kid, and I rolled over. And I thought it was my mother. It touched my head, and it was something else. And to this day, I don't know who it was. A typical I've, I've uh, out of close to death quite body a few experience. Times. Like fourteen Erica, times. did you uh, witness basically the angelic type as well, or do you have any questions? For yeah, us? I had one walk up to me, and I was sick, laying on the couch. And my mother, I was on a little bad fever, but it was breaking, and she was going to take me to the doctor. And uh, when I rolled over, I was, my, I was facing the back of the couch. And I rolled over, and I was looking at the floor because I just kind of felt bad, you know. I, was, I felt bad. And I saw bare feet, and I thought it was my mother. And I saw purple, and I was like, kind of scarlet purple. And I was like, I thought it was maybe my mother had, maybe, well, she always had a, a dress I always liked. She had wore, it was pretty. And I thought that it was her. When I asked her about it, she said, no, son, it wasn't me. I wasn't wearing that. And it kind of, you know. I couldn't figure out what had happened. Well, you know, for me, I, I, I've only been the, the three, and I say three beings only because uh, that I've been in contact with. Um, but it's really just the blue beings, as I always, because I don't know, you know, I, 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 I sometimes they say reptilian because there was elongated pupils, um, but yeah. they don't look anything like that Godzilla kind of character with the right. scales, you know. So I, I think they can know, kind of bend themselves what they want. Yeah, well, and um, and that's the thing. It's like, um, but the, the short, childlike beings, and then the taller, gray. But I still don't have. I think I'm I'm mainly, you know, contact with the blues. So that might be what you feel comfortable with too. Yeah, and that was that clearly what my hybrid uh, was a product of. I'm more comfortable with the angelic type. I don't know. I don't know why, but I am. I've seen craft too. I've seen more than one. Well, that's I mean, the thing. I, I you have to trust yeah. your intuition. You know what you feel like comfortable, and and definitely, you know, uh, what kind of contact. And you know, you should ask your family if you haven't already. If they if they've had their own experiences. I've had entities maybe... in the house. I've had entities in the house. It's been seen. I'll tell you that. Okay. Images. I haven't seen that's actually sat down on the bed. I've got pictures of a couple of pictures of some orbs. I, I wasn't sure if it was a camera or what. I took my camera one time and put it in the room because kept, people kept seeing it, kept seeing it in there, kept seeing it. In there. So I stuck my camera in there and took a picture. And there was a picture of an orb in there. Well, I inc- uh, just, my opinion is I encourage you to find out if there is a mission. I mean, if you have a personal mission. I mean, you know, you, not saying that everybody that's, you know, contacted or, you know, abducted has one. But I know that I have one, and I know that they told me this. And and, and that's where, you know, I mean, I'm making it a longer uh, thing out of, you know, writing about it because it's just, there's just more, it's it's easier to say. But in a nutshell, um, we, I, you know, I'm supposed to tell the world about the love, their love, our love and how it all pertains and and how we have to get past the fear to get to it because the fear is stopping us from everything. I know. Earlier, now, of course, Erica, this isn't like it's the big original. Ooh, you know, wow! Erica said the thing that nobody ever said before because it's not original. But it's just that uh, that's the way I perceived this um, message, and it wasn't. I didn't hear like they didn't like open their mouth and have the words coming to me. It was. You know, just I just know that's what they were, you know, 
giving me, and it's just like in my head. I know what, I mean, at the time, you know. I suppose it's telepathic. Uh, you, so, and, of course, that puts about, me out there to look like an idiot and a weirdo. But, <laughs> you know, this is something I agreed to, and I understand it now, and it took some time. It took, a, you know, a couple of years for me to, it's been like about two years, you guys, since I, maybe even three. Time's been going by really quick, like this whole year is almost gone already. So maybe it's been three years since I uh, since I went and got hypnosis. So I'm still fairly new to everything, but... Um, you know, I'm just like putting myself out there. You know. Well, you're speaking earlier about your telepathic, uh, you know, being connection with these guys, and your, uh, you know, you felt sorry for J. Rod and Dr. J. Andy Elias brought in, you know, Ron Gardner and uh, the Ron Birch story right there from Area 51, uh, Dan Birch, excuse me, and then that quite that. Whole thing went quite viral. We got a few minutes, and uh, I wanted to ask you: Why do you think? What was your affiliation with J. Rod? Because you felt sorry for him, and you know that he's back home, right? And he went back in a, through a Stargate. Yeah, I guess I just feel sorry for the fact that I don't know. I don't know if it's feeling sorry that's the right word. There, there's so much emotions that was you know connected to that. It's just, I mean, he was. There and he, I don't know, wasn't it where he had to, I mean, it's pretty much because of Dan that he got to go back, wasn't it? Dr. J? Yes. Uh, As a matter of fact, Dan Burrish developed a relationship with this being over time, and each time that the people who were monitoring him, the military officers, saw that Mr. Burrish or Dr. Burrish was communicating with him. They would zap him uh, and threaten him. But ultimately, there was this meeting with three species, uh, two of them looking like they were humans. Uh, one was a Pleiadian, another was a Nordic, the other was this one, which came from Zeta Reticula the Gray. And during this meeting, it happened near a Stargate where the other two beings came in. And since they can't breathe our air, they had to be in what he called carriages where essentially they were glass, uh, uh, giant glass tubes that they were fit in, that they were standing in, and they'd be rolled around like a wheelbarrow or something along the lines of that and then stood up so they could talk. During that meeting or treaty meeting, Dr. Burris pushed J-Rod into the Stargate so he can go back home. Uh, The next thing he remembers was being knocked about 15, 20 feet away with machine guns being cocked and pointed at him and then getting hit by the butt of the gun. So they were clearly upset at him for giving away J-Rod or sending him home. But, yes, J-Rod is safely home. Yeah, and I'm glad for that. Um, But I just feel sorry that we were, as a human race, were represented in that way towards J-Rod and his kind. Because that was ugly. And it's so it horrible was, the way that uh, uh, the, the the people who are representing, the powers that be, I don't care what you call them, it's wrong. And it's like, you know, people like, like us, we are all uh, of the people. Apparently the reason why J-Rod was treated so horribly, unlike other ETs who walk around the Pentagon openly, was apparently, according to Dr. Bursch's words, was that J-Rod was a spy. And that's why he was kept in captivity. Now, can we confirm that? No. But that's what he said. That's why he was treated uh, less fair than any other ET that we have on Earth. Yeah, well, you know, I just, I wonder about that because, I mean, what, what makes them a spy? Look, there's so many people that are quote unquote terrorists. You know, it's almost like it's a perfect little excuse. And I, I honestly, I'm just going to say it. I don't buy it. I think that J-Rod was just, he wasn't down with what their little deal was. You know, he didn't want to do their dirty stuff or whatever. And, uh, you know, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. But, uh, again, I don't have any proof. The J-Rod uh, story, we did uh, three interviews. They went viral on third phase of moon everybody take a look at those the information was vast it was furious and quite uh 
where we're getting, you know, videos and photographs of basically the genitalia of what these aliens look like is, I think, is the first time of, uh, you know, insight of what's going on. Actually, we're going to stick around a little longer. We just went uh, kind of on an explosion. We're getting people just calling in. It just doubled on the online users. We're going to go for a few more minutes. Everybody just stay online. Wow, it's just going. <laughs> All into three four seven nine three four zero three seven eight. We're going to try and get to everybody. The subject matter right now is uh, the J Rod theory and uh, the whole aspect. But uh, we're going to do an extended version. I think we got about another fifteen to twenty minutes left. So we're going to try and pull it out. Uh, let's go to this uh, somebody that just joined us. Very code one one one's with us. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name's Jim and. Uh, I just want to say that when I was younger, uh, my grandfather act was a he was a he was in the army during World War II, and uh, he swears that uh, he he was actually in the, uh, the Battle of Los Angeles, and he swears that those were not weather ships; those were actually alien ships. And he told me he saw one of the aliens, and he swore to me, and this is a little bit before he died. He swore to me that there were some figures from space. Well, that will well, doesn't be, that uh, sound you know, uh, really happy on you there, buddy? Okay, maybe we shouldn't stick around. We're not exactly sure. Let's go with... Uh, <gasps> you know, then that's the thing. You know what? Let's face it. Wow, you know, people making the effort like that, it's just, it's amazing that they make the effort, and they really could have used it for so much more. Absolutely. Uh, wow. Just, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on, but it is exploding right here. Let's go to area code 207. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Thanks for calling. Where are you calling from and who's speaking? I'm calling from Maine. Um, uh, my name is Max. Hey, Max. Do you got aliens really do, really do butt stuff to you? Is that true? Pardon me? Go ahead. Do we couldn't hear you. Do, you have a US... do they probe your butt? No, they don't. Just yours, though. Okay, well, I think basically what's going on is a hack attack, my opinion. I'm not exactly sure. You wow. know, I find it funny. I mean, and that's the thing people think, oh, I'm going to get to them. I'm going to try to get to them. Really? Uh, you know, it's funny, too. I mean, that stuff is funny. I'll contact you, and it's still funny as hell. You know, people just don't get it. I don't care. I can laugh harder at myself, harder at all the things around like that. It is funny. That stuff is funny, but, I mean, really... You know, to actually have taking the moment out like this, I mean, that's a little silly, you know. But he editing all this out in case uh, maybe um, we're, there's hello? somebody that in zero one one. You're on third phase of moon live. We're gonna censor right now. We're on a kind of a radio standard. Hello, hello you're live third phase of moon. Go ahead, Erica. Uh, hi, I just uh, saw a UFO. It looks kind of like a dick. Well, at least you get to see one finally. You know, you don't look in your pants and you won't see nothing. So, hey, good for you. Wow. Uh, you know, I think we just yeah, That's the only place uh, you're going to see one. I mean, I'm just saying, I probably got a bigger one than the hand, and I'm not even. <laughs> I think uh, I think what what happened was a basically a uh, third phase of moon pack attack which is quite interesting. Uh, it was quite entertaining, but we're going to... I was pretty cool that how we had this first third phase of moon episode, the first panel. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to uh, we're gonna be posting that up on third phase of moon. I'm going to go back to everybody and uh, give everybody their last words right here uh, at third phase of moon. We've got a few minutes left. Joe from Virginia, thanks for calling in. Uh, yeah. What do you got to say about that's radio show. Did, Go did, ahead. did that guy, one guy, call in and use the N word? Yes. You kidding me? See, that's what's wrong no. with this planet right now. They need to let go of the hate. That's what's wrong with this yeah. planet. I agree with you. It's destroying us. Destroying our, our way of living. Go ahead, that's Joe. Why we have so many laws. It's just crazy. If you can't say that good, don't say it. Yeah, and you know what? It's not going to stop us from talking about this. No, you know what? It's not. Most of the people that do that, they're actually scared. Me, he's, got the brain, of, he's got the brain of a three year old. 
It needs to wow. Yeah, you know what? They're actually the afraid. Group. Like they hear something that sounds like it resonates with them, and they go, oh, I'm going to have to call and make fun of it. Because they're yeah. afraid. They're really showing how scared they are of their own shadow, in a way. Somebody just chimed in on the flash chat and said it was an attempt for a uh, cover up. Just to, you know, that's. People just want to yeah, go out there. It could be somebody just called in to, to mess with your channel, too, because of, uh, something's going out that they they want to try to stop. Do you think so? Sorry, I had a um, quick comeback on that one dude with the pants and the. Because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I Actually, can think of better things to do, I think. There was a lot of people that called in and just, it was a sophisticated, uh, you know, call-in, sophisticated online user flash chat that just came in so fast. There was a, it was, there was a design. It wasn't just one. So I think it, a lot of this isn't just little children behind the scenes doing it. I think there's a, I think 40 calls in just in less than one minute, there was something mm-hmm. going on. Oh. It yeah, that a was joke. a lot. That was a quick, yeah, drive-by real quick. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, the word's going to get out. We're going to get it out on Third Phase of Moon. Uh, Jay, what do you think of tonight's show? And uh, everything else in the beginning was just incredible. Tell me. Oh, that was great. I mean, uh, the girl that I was talking to earlier, I mean, she sounded like she's really had something happen to her. Because I've experienced uh, close to death. I've left my body. I've, 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 had, I've almost died like 14 times. And I don't know why I'm still hanging around, but I'm still here. <laughs> I just want to remind everyone, listen to Revolution Radio, uh, Third Phase of Moon Radio, Thursdays, 8 to 10 Eastern Time at freedomslips.com. Dr. J, thanks for joining us. And we will be at uh, the Freedom Slips uh, radio show. And uh, again, Erica, thanks again for sharing this, you know, touchful story. You gave a uh, really big insight. People are going to appreciate it around the world. They've shared similar experiences. Go ahead, Erica. Well, thanks, everybody, um, and I appreciate it. You know, like I said, um, they're not going to stop us no matter how much, you know, someone's scared. You know, it, it's obvious when, when anyone listens to somebody that, say, calls in and heckles. I mean, that becomes an obvious, hey, I'm afraid of my shadow kind of thing. And it's really not becoming for them, but, you know, it's not hurting us. And that's the funny thing is because, you know, a lot of it's funny. I mean, I always talk about probing, blah, blah, blah. I never got... Hey, you know, where was mine? Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just this is what happens, and, and, and this is what we have to deal with, what is going down, and we can't ignore it anymore. And I'm glad you guys have this show. And, uh, you know, I'll be hanging around here and there and, you know, doing my thing. So I'm not stopping. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and by the way, I just want to say you guys can find me on Facebook. Go Erica Getch. Just find me there, please. Check out Erica Getch on Facebook. She's got uh, something to tell you. Absolutely appreciate words, Erica. If anybody out there has captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, you can contact Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook. My name is Blake Cousins, and we'll see everybody again next time. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody.